finally, I got I got Heller's Bakery and this one in the same time, and we were debating to go there, to come here, to go there. In November uh, 2004, we signed the papers for here. In December 2004, they told us at the bakery, we decided for you guys, because there were three different groups they wanted to, to get it. So they decided for us, and we're like, hey, the bakery doesn't need too much work. Let's uh, finish the bakery first, and, uh, and let, let's go for it. Um, my brother, friends and family, they are very helpful. I'm uh, very proud to have very good family. They supported me with money. I'm paying them back. It's but most of the family will be there on your bad day, and nobody else will be there on your bad day. So stay and stick with the family. They are the number one, you know, number one help. The, I mean, there are some families that, you know, the brother screwed me up and did all this, this, you know, there are some stuff like that, but you got to pass through that and what to see what is more important. And I have a couple of people, they say, I haven't spoken to my father for 14 years. I said, my father screams to me every day and I still say good morning to him. <laughs> and I scream to my father too. I'm like, no, you don't know this thing because, I mean, there is a, a gap of generation. It's 20 years different, okay? The, we didn't have computers that time, okay? My dad didn't have the other stuff. So there is a gap of generation, there is a lack of, of not communication somewhere. But you got to pass that band. I said, you know what? Do what you are best, but you still say good morning. You still say hello. You, you got to do that. In my opinion, the way I look at it, my father raised me for 20 years. He supported me. They gave me diapers. They took me to school. They tried to make me somebody. I'm going to have to return him 20 years when he's 80. I hope he lives 100. You know, so I need to return that back somehow. And that, that's my philosophy. Your friends and family should be number one that you should stick with. Um, another thing that you should stick with, in my opinion, is some guy that knows a little bit better than what you're doing. You got to, not, not, a, not about, not about the, um, the money, but about the experience that he has. If you have a shoulder that you can go and ask, hey, I'm in this trouble, what should I do? I have three paths. And the difference is, you know, a lawyer will tell you the legality of it. A friend, sometimes there is no legality of it. Sometimes you've got to deal with, uh, deal with deal. You know, the, your brother slapped you in the face. Are you going to take him for uh, a, an assault? That's what it is. I don't know. That's, that's how life is. Sometimes you've got, you got to deal with the negotiation. And the other thing is, uh, people, they own buildings and landlords. If you, you know, you've got to, you got to see their point of view. If you guys, if you own a place, you got to think about, okay, what am I going to make comfortable? I want this money to come every month. I don't want this money to be two years and then a month empty and then two, three months empty and then a year empty and you don't know when you are going to rent it out. So you got to see the point of philosophy of the owner also. So you got to negotiate the bounces, you know, and see that why is he telling you I want you this high rent? There are people they are they have no logic to it, but there are people they do have logic. So you got to kind of see the entire thing on that.